In this video, what I'm going to discuss is the first step of the search process. That first step deals with you having a problem or a need for the information. Without a problem or a need, no one searches. But once you have that problem or a need, just having it isn't enough. The other important aspect of step one is to develop a clear research question, which is what we're mainly going to focus on in this video. You will notice that the first step, having a problem and trying to construct a clear research question, is the first step of a six-step search process that you'll go through. Now, doing well with each step and being methodical and thinking through it will help you to be more successful in doing a search. If at any point, though, during your search you find or feel like your search is going off in a direction you did not intend or is not yielding you the results that you want, don't hesitate to stop and start over. There's nothing like getting um, a long way into a search and having spent a lot of time and then be very frustrated by your results. So the first thing to do though is to come up with a clear research question. Having this question is important and will get you off to a good start. Now, in providing care for patients, you come up against all kinds of problems or issues that they're having that you need to help with. One of those problems may be like the one you see before you, which is you may need to be able to help an older female patient to deal with the pain or issues related to fibromyalgia. In other words, what you're really trying to do is improve their quality of life, which may mean that you're dealing with all kinds of different things. That could range from chronic pain to fatigue or sleep issues. Whatever one of these issues you're having to address to help the patient um, is largely dependent upon conversations with the patient. Regardless though, you're going to have to come up with a good question. What the question will do for you is instead of you just going and searching for information without any real direction, it'll really bring some focus to the search of the literature and help you to be more efficient as you're searching because you'll have a clear idea as to where your destination is or what your goal is. After consulting with your patient, you may decide that you want to address the pain issues of fibromyalgia with an alternative therapy such as therapeutic touch or guided imagery. But you may be unsure as to which course of action is the most effective, which may lead you to write a question such as the one you see before you. Is therapeutic touch or guided imagery more effective when treating a patient with fibromyalgia? Now you have a question and you have some direction to your search, but you're still not ready to go into the database and start to do a search by just copying and pasting this question into the search box. The next step is you must break the question into groups or concepts. When it comes to evidence-based practice, this is very easily done by using the PICO format. And what you'll see before you is the PICO format and how and what each section stands for. The P is for the problem, patient, population, or program that you're dealing with, which is, deal is, is based upon your information need. The I is for the intervention, what are you going to do? The C is the comparison. What are you comparing it to? Sometimes there isn't a comparison, and so sometimes this box is blank. Then there's the O, which is the outcome. What is your desired result from what you're doing? And then there are the two T's, the type of question and the type of study. Each section of the PICO format is very important and helps to better inform you and what you're doing when it comes to doing a search. The two T's when it comes to the PICO format are important because, as you know, when it comes to evidence-based practice, your main goal is to find evidence-based practice guidelines, meta-analyses, and systematic reviews. But as you go up the period of mid of evidence, while the evidence increases in quality, the number decreases. When you cannot find the top of the pyramid, that means you have to turn to the primary research. And when it comes to primary research, 
depending on the question you're asking, and which you can see I have uh, listed the questions and their definitions down the left hand side of this chart, um, that depending on the question you're asking, there are different types of primary studies or studies that will best answer those questions, therefore further helping you as you're doing a search by using the limits and other methods um, that you can further focus in on the right study to answer your question therefore not having to sift through as many articles and getting good answers and good evidence in order to make a decision. After writing your question and contemplating it for a moment, your PICO may look something like this. In each section you'll see that a different aspect of the question has, has filled the box. You'll notice in red over here when it comes to the P that when it comes to the characteristics of the patient, in this case female or older or aged, um, that I have put it in red. And the reason is is because while it may seem initially important, as you get into your searches, sometimes some of the characteristics of the patient won't always be applicable when you're doing a search because many times, or in some cases, um, the intervention you're doing will be effective regardless of age or sex. In those cases when it's not, the characteristics of the patient may have to be added to the search. Now you'll notice down here at the end, as I told you before, um, the type of question you're asking can many times help you when you can't find a top of the pyramid piece of literature like a systematic review or a meta-analysis. Um, because we're looking at therapy or a treatment, you know, a randomized control trial could be very effective to us because as you can recall, a randomized control trial is the one primary study that you can do causation with of, ca of uh, cause and effect. If you do this, this will happen. Now with that being understood, when I go to do my search, I now have some concepts, but I'm still not going to use all of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my search and I'm going to think, what are the main concepts of this search that will help me to get to the information that I need to answer my question? In the case of this search, the main concepts are fibromyalgia, guided imagery, and therapeutic touch. Fibromyalgia being the condition of the, the patient dealing with, guided imagery and therapeutic touch being the two interventions. Now you'll notice I did not use outcome and that's because sometimes the outcome is unspoken. Like in this case, if I use guided imagery or therapeutic touch, I would hope they would eliminate the symptoms of fibromyalgia if they're discussed together. And so I'm not going to use it. Because anytime you do a search, the more concepts you try to put together or make a relationship with, the fewer articles you'll get. And because you always want to start broad and then focus, I'm just going to start with these three that you see before you. One other thing to keep in mind is once you have your concepts is you may also want to make sure that you always find synonyms or related terms for the concepts as well. Think of some other ways that you can describe that term because as you get into the databases, different databases will use different terms and so it's important to have some more tools in your toolbox so to speak to help find the information that you need. Now what might be some alternative terms for these three major concepts of our question? If you were to do this search, you may come up with a list such as this one, in which I have many terms and different ways of describing fibromyalgia, as well as therapeutic touch and guided imagery. Because keep in mind, different databases, as I've said before, will describe a condition or an issue in different ways. And so having more terms to use is always important because when you do a good search, you should always search in at least two databases, if not more. Now with that said, you can't always come up with the alternative terms off the top of your head, which means that a good way to get to them is when you are looking for background information on your topic. Many times you're looking for information to kind of inform yourself about the condition before you get into a search. Well, in doing that familiarizing, you are, there are many uh, good sources you could go to that would also help you to find some alternative terms. One would be like point of care tools like first consult or up to date. 
A couple other sites that might be useful to you are provided by the federal government, like Medline Plus and PubMed Health. Or you could use the controlled vocabulary entry terms of the databases, like when it comes to the medical subject headings in PubMed and the CINAHL headings in CINAHL, each of them have sections where it tells you that if you use this term, um, it's going. It, it stands for these various other terms. In CINAHL, they call it the used for area or the used for field, and in PubMed, it is actually called the entry terms field. And that's one place to go to in order to get some keywords or some alternative uh, terms. Another place you could do go is to go to Google Scholar and do a very simple search. By doing so, you could get to some articles that may discuss your topic and use terms that you're not using. If you're not familiar with what Google Scholar is, it is a, it is a very simple tool that you use just like you do Google. If you're doing any of these things, what you're doing is what is called term or concept mining. And the better you do this, the more effective your search can be. Now, when it comes to Google Scholar, the reason that it is different from Google is when you look at it, it's going to look exactly the same. But unlike Google, which you see hunts the text of web pages, Google Scholar only looks at the scholarly literature and therefore will allow you to find scholarly articles that may be applicable to your question. But the thing that's an issue with Google Scholar that is not an issue when it comes to using PubMed or CINAHL is that it tends to put weight on citation counts when it uh, displays search results and it's not always clear as to why you're getting the, the results that you're getting. So Google Scholar is a good place to start. It's a good place to help you fill in blanks. But it's not a good place to go if you're trying to do a thorough literature search. But it is very good at helping you to get a good start when you might get stuck and, and need a, a kind of a push or you need some alternative terms to use in other databases to find what you need. And with that said, that is how you start your search process with a well thought out question that gives you direction to ensure that you're able to meet your needs as far as information and solving your problem.